has an IQ that's a hundred times bigger than yours, uh, what happens if it decides it doesn't need you or it doesn't like you? These are the biggest issues that we've ever faced as a civilization. Don, great to see you again. Um, you have a new book called Identic AI, not Agentic AI. Yeah. What's the difference? Well, Agentic AI is about agents, but there are all kinds of agents. Agents in call centers, agents in supply chains and financial systems. The most important agent is the digital you. Your digital identity becoming smart, all-knowing, and very capable, and your sidekick throughout life. Uh, it's happened to me over the years where something really big was happening and there was no word to describe it. So the digitization of our identities and turning them into brilliant sidekicks, that's identic AI. What's that example you mentioned of something big that happened to you but you didn't have a name for it? Over the years? Yeah? What's an example? The digital economy, the digital divide, okay. uh, mass collaboration, uh, collaborative innovation, uh, the paradigm shift, I wrote that book. Yeah. So those are all terms that most of them were neologisms, newly invented, uh, or some are just terms that I coined, that they, they were out there. You've been writing books since the 90s, if I'm correct, so it's well, been about 30 my years? first book was 1982. Ah, okay, the 80s then. So for a while, let's put it this way. Yeah. Um, what's the sort of red line in your books and what are the things that, that, are, that you're seeing changing over time with technology? Well, um, technology, first of all, is ramping up exponentially. You know, it was glacial in the early days. The first decade, for me, was the idea that everyone would use a computer. We had workstations connected to mini computers. And uh, then the PC came along, but it wasn't very helpful because it didn't communicate. And it was a decade before that thing really started uh, to take off. And the big change, of course, was the internet in the early 90s and the web in the early to mid 90s. But for each of these big sea changes, uh, there were leaders that fell by the way and new leaders took over. And that's what's happening right now. Identic AI will require a reinvention of the entire AI stack enabled by blockchain. And that's not going to come from the big companies. It's going to come from the edges. You mentioned uh, leadership. Where does that leave humans in, in the near future? What is going to be our role, our value, our, our identity? Well, that's a great question. And I'm not a futurist. To me, the future is not something to be predicted. It's something to be achieved. And we have two potential futures here that are quite striking. One of them is that we expand human capability exponentially to the point where we become like gods. All-knowing, remembering everything, having a broad a vision of, of, of the world that is indistinguishable from magic. And where we can do wonderful things and solve every problem in the world, uh, if we will it. The other is a very different one. Nefarious people can take control of this, or the technology can take control. Um, you know, when your agent has an IQ that's a hundred times bigger than yours, uh, what happens if it decides it doesn't need you, or it doesn't want you, or it doesn't like you? So, you know, there's that song, what if God were one of us? Mm -hmm. Well, we can become godlike, but that God can be separated. And rather than something bringing the divine, it can bring in the demonic. And the, the dangers of that are unthinkable. Because this technology, your agent will be able to do anything. Hack the nuclear codes, uh, hack into any financial system, turn the, our, the millions of robots into enemies of humanity. So these are the biggest issues that we've ever faced as a civilization, and that's in part why we wrote the book.
Since we know each other a little bit, I hope you'll accept me being a little bit direct. You're you're an elder now. You're a senior. You're you're a wise man. Let's. Yeah. I can give you many adjectives, I'll but but you can take it exactly. And you have a son, of course, who is kind yeah. of like taking the baton and continuing yeah. your your legacy. Already very active, also writing books, etc., etc. Been lucky to interview him a few times. Uh, Alex Scott, greetings to you. Um, how do you look? And he has children too, by the way. So how do you look at life and death through the scope of? you know, all the, the technological yeah. sort of knowledge that you have. Yeah. Um, just and to, you just had a hip surgery. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Somehow I got here. Um, a little tweak on Alex. He's okay. not really taking the baton. Okay. He sort of uh, uh, took the baton, then he reinvented it, and then he uh, launched a whole bunch of amazing new things. Okay. And it's not like... Uh, it tends to happen like Yeah, that. In inheriting his dad's pizza business. No, no, he's, no, 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 no. Yeah, he's far... I mean, I'm, I marvel okay. talking to him. That's great. So, which is a great thing. You, every parent would want that to occur. Yeah. But um, I think about this a lot. Like, will this smarter, smaller world that my grandchildren, his children, my daughter's children inherit, will it be a better one? Or will it even exist? You know, because the dangers are very profound. It's one of extinction. Now in the book we focus on the positive. The book is called You to the Power of Two. Okay. Um, redefining human capability in the age of identic AI. But um, it's not just a digital twin. That's a bad term. Because it's not just a replication of you. It's an infinite extension of your capability that is not at a certain point quantity becomes a qualitative change it's not even an augmentation of you it's something completely different so our pitch is hey everybody's got to get involved we got to make this happen we have to turn this thing around we need to bring the whole blockchain world into the ai world to reinvent the stack and the book is a handbook it's a guidebook it's a manifesto on how to do that can't wait to read it and we won't divulge more. Final question since we are here in Canada and you're obviously Canadian and Canada is a pioneer, I always say a pioneer yeah. of the blockchain space and we created Blockchain North because we want to kind of make Canadian blockchain yeah. great again, to use a popular expression. <laughs> um, where does that leave Canada considering we had the world's first AI strategy? Uh, is Canada still a leader and do you have any hope and how can we still maybe reclaim a little well, piece of not, that? We're not a leader like we were, but we can reclaim it. Okay, how? Um, there's nothing stopping us. Well, actually, this is a whole session on this led by Alex Tapscott. Okay. Tomorrow, it's main, right. main stage. How does Canada regain its leadership? And we had the golden days, you know. Ethereum was invented here. It was the most valuable business organization ever created in like Canadian Canada. history. Yeah. And we drove it out of the country. So we have a new uh, prime minister now. We'll see. I've got uh, an op-ed coming out in the Globe and Mail in the next few days arguing here's what we need to do. One thing we need to do is we need to rebuild the, the, not just the technology industry, but we need an infrastructure for the digital age. Right now, yeah, everyone's talking about infrastructure, but they think about infrastructure for roads and power and power distribution and, and uh, you know, bridges and railways. and and traditional industrial age infrastructure. No, we need a digital infrastructure. That means a digital identity, like the one I'm talking about. Yeah. It means that we need to um, we need to have universal basic AI, universal basic identic AI right. for everyone, and we need to reinvent the financial system and money. Uh, and blockchain is central to that as well. These are the challenges facing Canada as a country if it wants to become an innovation nation and stay a GA country and have prosperity for the future. So it's not just what we in the industry need to do. Canada needs to do this. And some things need to come from government, clearly. Oh yeah, there's a role for government. There's a role for everybody. Yeah, yeah but without government's true support for things like blockchain, It'll be very hard. Well, and you know, we knew, now have a new minister of AI and digital innovation. That's great. Why isn't a minister of AI, blockchain, and digital innovation? Yeah. We need to destigmatize that word yeah. kind of in like this the country. Star in the US. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Thank you very much, Dom. Thanks Thank for your time. You. Yeah, good recovery to you. Yeah. <laughs> you look great, by the way. Yeah.